rheumatoid arthritis is what I will discuss in this uh, video. Rheumatoid arthritis affects uh, both men and women, but uh, about a two to three times more uh, likelihood in a female patient. And the onset is usually about 35 to 50 years of age. In terms of cause, Rheumatoid arthritis def definitely has a genetic component to it. In particular, it's very strongly associated with a very specific haplotype serotype, and that is HLA-DR4, and they'll mention these in the clinical vignettes. There's also some evidence to suggest that it's uh, associated sometimes with viral infections, and also can be uh, associated with smoking. Now let's talk about some of the symptoms. What I wanted to do initially is just draw a very basic diagram of the hand to kind of illustrate where this will affect a person. So this is of course the wrist and when you have these uh, joints if this is the second finger and this is the third finger, the ones here are known as MCP. And I'll write it out because it's important. They're metacarpophalangeal joints. And in rheumatoid arthritis, these are affected. In particular, the ones of the second and third uh, finger also affected are these ones and these also have a specific name they're known as the proximal interphalangeal joints so remember those uh, joints as being the main parts of the body that are affected there's other parts as well but these are the main main ones now let's talk about the symptoms well early morning stiffness is a big one in particular a prolonged early morning stiffness for greater than 60 minutes of those joints in addition to the stiffness you also will have joint pain and swelling and then also there will be limitation of mo motion involving those joints and the person will also complain of fatigue. One thing that's very important that is uh, evident on the physical exam is these fixed deformities. And what I'm referring to is that the hand will be in a permanent state of a contracture. And I encourage you to look these pictures up on the internet. They're essentially showing ulnar deviation of the fingers almost like a person's fingers are locked in that position and it can be quite uh, troublesome to the patient with day-to-day -day activities now let's talk about the diagnosis fortunately there are uh, a very specific set of things that you should look for it's not just a random set of tests you have to look at the joints you have to look at a test called the rheumatoid factor. You have to look at a test called the anti-CCP. And then you look at tests such as CRP, ESR. And I will explain what each of these are. First, let's start at the bottom here. CRP and ESR are essentially acute phase reactants. And you can kind of think of them as non-specific indicators of inflammation. They tell you there's inflammation. They don't really tell you much more than that. CRP is um, an acronym for C-reactive protein. And ESR is an acronym for erythrocyte sedimentation rate. And both of these should be elevated. But the one that's really specific is ESR because it will be elevated in 90% of patients with rheumatoid arthritis. So keep that in mind. Now we get to anti-CCP. So what's that? What this is, is describing certain antibodies that are present 
and rheumatoid uh, arthritis. And I'll write this out because it's important. What does this uh, stand for? Anticyclic citrullinated peptide antibodies. Now notice it's called anti-CCP because of these words, but sometimes they, it's known as ACPA, where they get it from ACPA. I don't know why they do that, why they give it two different names, but whether it's ACPA or anti-CCP antibodies, it's the same thing, and it will be positive in rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid factor, well, that's an easy one to remember, right? Rheumatoid arthritis, rheumatoid factor. It will be definitely present, but only in 70% of patients. So that's the key thing that they try to trick you. They'll give you a patient with rheumatoid factor negative, but the patient still has rheumatoid arthritis because rheumatoid factor, interestingly, is only uh, positive in 70% of patients. And then finally, the x-rays that you do to look at the joints will show some very characteristic findings, such as joint space narrowing, which is very characteristic. The space in between the joints is smaller than it should be. And then the erosions of bone, that's also very characteristic that you can see on uh, x-rays. Treatment. Treatment really involves a few categories of medications, such as NSAIDs, DMARDs, and of course steroids. So let's talk a little bit about this. NSAIDs, uh, for example, silicoxy, even several others, they're given to decrease inflammation and they're very effective. DMARDs, what's that? Well, DMARDs stands for disease modifying anti-rheumatic drugs and these are very important there's a several of them there's a three that I would like to mention that are very important methotrexate sulfasalazine and hydroxychloroquine if you need to remember meds for rheumatoid arthritis please remember these these are the most commonly used there. They reduce inflammation, they help control symptoms, and they can also slow the development of joint damage. Steroids, of course, you know, decrease inflammation, and they also slow bony erosion. So let's take a look at a few vignettes. A 44-year-old woman consults her PCP because of nagging feeling of fatigue, pain, and stiffness in both hands upon rising. The pain persisted for at least one hour after arising and was severe enough to make getting herself ready for the next day's work difficult. Physician found that she had low blood count, an elevated sedimentation rate, and an elevated C-reactive protein level. But x-rays of the hands were normal. Feeling that she may have some sort of autoimmune condition, he referred her to a rheumatologist immediately after her haplotype determined and ran immunologic tests for rheumatoid factor and ACPA as well as testing for ANAs. Her haplotype was HLA-DR4, tested positive for ANA and ACPA, but negative for rheumatoid factor. Most likely this lady suffered from which of the following conditions. Well, she's got the morning stiffness when she's getting out of bed. She's got the high ESR and the C-reactive protein, and she has this uh, positive ACPA. Remember, it was the anticyclic citrullinated peptide antibody also sometimes known as anti-CCP antibodies. The fact that a rheumatoid factor is negative is okay because in 30% of patients the rheumatoid factor can be negative. But without a doubt there's enough clues in this question to point to E. Next question. A 50 year old female reports a one month history of pain in her wrists. She does not recall any injury. On exam both wrists are warm but not red feel boggy in palpation and lack 30% of both flexion and extension. No other joints are affected. She feels fatigued and unwell, but attributes this to her busy schedule. Radiographs of the wrists are normal. Lab findings are unremarkable, except for mildly elevated erythrocyte sedimentation rate, negative rheumatoid factor, which of the following is most likely. Again, she gives you a pretty good history 
that's consistent with rheumatoid arthritis, elevated ESR. Again, they try to trick you with the negative rheumatoid factor, but there is enough uh, information in this question to make the most likely diagnosis of the four given to be A. The wrists is really what stands out for me. The next question, 56 year old woman comes to the office complaining of pain in her fingers of both hands. The pain is accompanied by stiffness that is worse in the mornings and gradually improves throughout the day. Over the past few months, she has also noticed some lumps on her forearms. Past medical history is otherwise remarkable for hypertension and menopause. Meds are only estrogen and progesterone for hormone replacement. Physical exam shows tenderness of the wrists and proximal joints of the second and third fingers bilaterally. Small nodules over the extensor surfaces of the forearms and hands are there. Lab studies will most likely show. Well, when they say second and third finger, that is so classic for rheumatoid arthritis that it kind of gives it away. But of the answer choices, definitely 90% of patients with rheumatoid arthritis will have an elevation of ESR. And finally, you are seeing a 23-year-old woman in your office for a follow-up visit. She had presented for initial visit a month ago, complaining of swelling in her fingers. Today, she continues to describe edema and erythema of the metacarpal phalangeal joints. She also had some edema of her left elbow. She explains that her morning st stiffness is lasting for more than one hour. She's currently on no meds. Her uh, mother and uh, maternal aunt have history of severe rheumatoid arthritis. Vitals are essentially normal. She has edema and erythema of the metacarpal phalangeal joints of both hands. The remainder of her joint exam is unremarkable. Results of the labs uh, are consistent with the diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis. The most appropriate intervention at this time to alter the course of her disease is well what choices do we have we have NSAIDs we have disease modifying anti rheumatic drugs and we have steroids and of those looks like the only one they list is one of the disease modifying anti rheumatic drugs and they would list a very popular one methotrexate so that would be the probably the most appropriate of the answer choices